Babylon civilization, the land of Saphon, Mesopotamia, the Bible. My journey to Mesopotamia started from the gates of Babylon, the cradle of human civilization, a place that had been here thousands of years before Christ. Walking on this land was like flying through history. The history you had to go through with a well-experienced guide. You go slowly and enjoy being here. Yes. Yeah, Nineveh. Nineveh. Yeah. Duhuk. Yeah. Kish. 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 Yeah. Uh, yeah. By Sagor. Yeah, this lion. Yeah. 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 The lion. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Ah. Like Labyrinth. Nice. Ah, yes. And I did about every palace and then we came from here. Yes. It is difficult to find the way. To the palace. Uh-huh. Right. Huh. So this is the original bit left. This is the original bit. When you when you read about it in archaeological books, you do not have the same feeling and the uh, same impression as being here to see this grandeur of these palaces and walls um, that were built hundreds of years ago uh, with uh, fascinating skills, how to build things, how to use asphalt and how to use mortar or the, uh, or the bricks is really, really fascinating. This is where the children of Israel were first displaced by Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon. This is the cradle of human civilization, the land of birth of Abraham, the capital of Sumerian state, and the treasure of the history, which is hiding many treasures inside of it. got lots of historical narratives about this place. Historians have recorded this civilization from 7000 BC to 1000 BC, a place where we can find the roots of most religions and civilizations. Symbols have special place in this land. Damage. Right. So they say this is Babylonia. Yes. Not hit it. Yeah. And uh, he has been power of Babylon. This is enemy. Yeah. Different story. Yes. What did you read about this one? Subdued uh, enemies. Yes. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Discovering the historical <laughs> mysteries awakens a strange feeling inside of you. In order to survive that feeling, you need to travel and put yourself on the path of history. This is Holyoke. They used to put a statue over there, yes. above a stage, uh -huh. like a new woman. Yes. From different materials, yeah. and they worship it. Yes. Time. One day I was a tour guide with someone from India. He told me, the temple of his grandfather in India, like this one. Huh. And this is uh, the well. Some of people from India and Pakistan, from uh, Islamic, they used to visit this one, and they believe two angels, they came from down, from the sky. Yes. Okay? The name of those in uh, Al-Quran, Karim, Harut, and Marut. Yes. They believe they are here. This original original wall of the temple is, is quite remarkable, uh, made of clay, as Babylonians apparently believed that uh, it comes to the Bible and uh, 
Judeo-Christian tradition and Islamic tradition as well that the first human being made was made of clay and therefore out of, out of veneration and respect to the, to the tradition they would build this, this temple out of clay and you can see it, it's, it's the blocks of clay uh, that, that come together with asphalt to, to, to produce this magnificent building for worship, prayer and uh, dedication. I knew that it would be a fascinating place, but I could not possibly imagine how impressive it would have been. And I think something that, that I find absolutely fascinating, this, this road where prophets and uh, figures from the Bible and the Quran and the Christian Jewish tradition walked as mere human, mere human beings is really breathtaking, absolutely marvelous. This is a highway in Babylon, was in the same original. The history is the same, 605, you see? Yeah. Yeah. At the time of Nebuchadnezzar, yeah. it is paved by asphalt and the bricks. My guide in Babylon spoke of the first asphalt made by human hands. He spoke of the glitter and glamour of the kings, treasures of the places with unique monuments of culture and impressive ruins that have survived. And all these buildings we are built to glorify the builders. Now they are gone, bros. On this side of the river Euphrates, on another side of the river Euphrates. But something that remains is love and friendship. And this is something, a treasure which is to be, something is to be treasured by all of us as human beings. People come and go, power is handed over to other generation. But something that, that remains is love and compassion and fairness that is left behind us. One of my companions on this trip was a Muslim scholar who was well versed in the Bible. Mr. Taglavi offered me to go and visit Baratha Mosque. This place, according to some scholars, was a place where Mary, mother of Jesus, used to pray. According to some historical books, the mosque was built on this very place where Jesus was born. It means that we will move from this place where Abraham was born to Baratha Mosque in Baghdad. Sadly, this mosque was blown up by a suicide bomber in April 2006. According to some Shiite scholars, this is a place where Jesus prayed and a fountain sprang up from the earth for the sake of Mary. This is an unknown place in the northern land near Euphrates, where many prophets and imams used to worship God. An old man who was in charge of the mosque spoke broken English. He was apologizing that he had not spoken English for 17 years. Ali ordered him yes. after he be Muslim uh -huh. to build a mosque in a place of the, the old church. Yeah, church. Yes. Uh -huh. Okay. Yes. They call it Baratha. Baratha. 
Barata. Barata, many means, yes. many meaning. Yes. One of it is the red pa uh, ground. Yes. Uh, ground. Yeah. Uh, uh, with the uh, with soft. Yes. Or bar atha in the ah. Syriani. Yes. In the Syriani, Syriani language. Yes. It is two words yes. in one word. Yeah. Bar atha. Atha. Yeah. Bar atha. Uh, there was a stone in this mosque that is believed to be a place upon which Jesus was born. Imam Ali placed this stone on this spot and prayed himself on it. The place who signed Ali yeah. to dig it, okay? Yeah. And when, he, when it, uh, it uh, opened, yes. they thing? finished the water up, he said, this water, this place, who drink Maryam, alayhi salam. Maryam is a drink from this water. Oh, I see. We, we, in, in, in our holy book, Quran, they said, Fashrabi, drink, yes. uh, order of God. Yes. Shrabi, wa qarri aina, be, be peace. وَلَا تَجِدَنَّهُمْ أَقْرَبَهُمْ مَوَدَّةً لِلَّذِينَ آمَنُوا الَّذِينَ قَالُوا إِنَّا نَصَارَةً You, you can't, uh, this is all Quran. Yes. هاي الآية حفظها. Yes. This, this uh, words of Quran said the Christian is very near to Muslims. Mm -hmm. And you like, you will find them when you read the Quran, they will cry with tears. Yes, yes. So the difference between we and you Little, very little, very little. The old gentleman was well aware of the history of Christianity in Iraq. He also knew a lot about the relationship between divine religions in Mesopotamia. Well, this is a very special place for Muslims and Christians. And this is a place where the, our past, our religious past, cross. And to see the stone, which is associated with the, uh, with the history of Imam Ali. we have to move to the largest and oldest Shia cemetery in the world. Along the way, Mr. Taglawi spoke about the graves of the great prophets, Adam and Noah, Prophet Hud and Saleh, the prophets that are highly respected by the followers of Abrahamic religions.
the cemetery covers an area of about 1,500 hectares. The statistics suggest that the 5 million people are buried here. The Wadi as Salam cemetery had a history as old as history of the prophets. Here we are in the shrine of Prophet Hood and Prophet Salem, who are highly respected by the faithful. I see huge numbers of Muslims congregating around the graves of the prophets. And again, a question is raised in my mind. What are they really doing here? These people had caught my attention along the way. And again, uh, the, this, these two, two persons that are being venerated in this uh, shrine uh, are, are, really, are, are, are common for uh, who is born within Islam and Judeo-Christian tradition, which makes it very sacred and very, very special. And I think future belongs to these sort of places where convergence takes place, where we rediscover our common roots in our spiritual heritage. Arabs are world famous for their hospitality. I find this feature particularly prominent among Iraqis. When a tribal chief learned about our visit in Wadi as Salam, he invited us for lunch. Once he realized that I was a Christian, he asked me what was bringing me to Iraq. He was kind enough to explain the philosophy of the entire event in a very simple language. A lot of people are coming every year to pay respect to someone who was killed 1400 years ago. This reminds me of Christian mourning for Christ on Good Friday. Shias and Christians have many commonalities in their holy books. For me, as an expert in history of religions, the simple language of the Sheikh was sweet and beautiful and kind, but not nearly enough. I had to hear more about common ground between Shias and Christians from a scholar like someone who had spent his life in researching this topic. In the personal library of Sayyid Samuel Badri, at his residence, I saw books that I had in my own library. I had been reading them since my childhood and had even translated some of them myself. It was rather surprising to see these books in the library of a famous Shia scholar. Here was the home of a Shia scholar with a great expertise and knowledge of Abrahamic scriptures and many other religions. Aha! Uh -huh. <laughs> Many versions we, I have in yes. this Bible. Yes, yes. Hebrew and Aramaic. And where do you live? Uh, in Tbilisi, Georgia. Georgia. Gurdjistan. And Georgia, you, you are from this Georgia or you immigrate to Georgia? No, uh, 
my family has lived in Georgia for 300 years, but we do not know before that. But, uh, and the old sources for, for, for your family, uh, Christian or Jewish? A Christian. To Christian. The, yeah, they're Christian. This situation in Arba'in, this mm. is a special one, only appear in the last 50 years. But in this huge amount, only in yeah. 14 years, only. Yeah, recently. This is after Saddam. Yes. And uh, it appears as a, a new phenomena in the world. New phenomena. It is. Uh, you have a, st uh, a study about Imam Hussein in the Bible? Yes, yes. We have got a wonderful scholar here who has been a great help to, uh, to consult with the Bible about Imam, Imam Hussein, Hussein yeah. and his martyrdom on the, on the bank of the river Euphrates. These days, being known as Arbain in sheer tradition and history. People from 70 countries reach out to shrine of Hussein, son of Imam Ali. This was the answer to a question that had boggled my mind. Now, from, from Protestant point of view, or from Islamic Sunni point of view, or from Islamic Shi'i point of view, they, uh, they also you know, met. met about this tawakkul, uh, that yeah. this yeah. expectation. Yeah. We expect mm. not to yes. give uh, final, you know, dogmatic everything. To expect, yeah. to expect, to open our mind for the future. Mm. For the, that's all. True. So one of the pre interpretations, this human, this, this new uh, phenomena about Imam Hussein, mm. is this one. To mm. prepare the way mm. of his coming, mm. to prepare the mm. Jesus and Al-Mahdi. Mm. We believe with second coming of Al Mahdi. But you also believe the second coming of Jesus? Of course. Yeah, yeah. He and he will, believe, he will appear before Al Mahdi. Mm. Hussein, and the, the son of Imam Ali, was the third Imam of the Shias. We spoke about eschatological understanding among Christians. I was rather delighted to discover rich citations about eschatology by all Shia Imams. I had a rather good feeling. I was always looking for unity between religions. And today, at the home of Sayyid Sami, we literally forged the alliance for unity. The Torah, the Bible, the Psalms, the Quran have many apocalyptic passages about the return of Christ and the Son of Man and the establishment of global peace. The root of all divine religions do seem to be the same. I think should be how we live between now and then, peacefully supporting justice, fairness, love, and mutual respect. This is very, very important. Mm. for all of us. Yes, it is. Yes, not it is. Christian only, no, no. not Muslim Sunni, no. not Muslim Shia, all of uh, the follower of, of uh, uh, Abraham mm. and the followers of uh, uh, religious. Yes, indeed. And indeed. of course, all of human beings. Indeed. Does the land of Safan contain answers to some questions asked by Christians, Muslims and others we have been wondering about. The Torah, the Bible, the Psalms and the Quran, all these books 
are holy and contain answers to all our questions. I came to Iraq to explore the cradle of civilization, but now I'm going to a place being inspired by a powerful story called Karbala. Welcome, welcome, <laughs> welcome, welcome, welcome. See you again. Inshallah, inshallah, inshallah. 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 According to Shia religious texts, this is the place where the rule of Son of Man will be established, here in Kufa Mosque. For Shia Muslims, this is the fourth most important mosque, after Masjid al-Haram, Masjid al-Nabi and Masjid al-Aqsa. This place has been visited by many divine prophets throughout the history. And I think, uh, in this respect, both Kufa and Najaf uh, and Karbala and these places are playing a very important role in the devotional and spiritual life of not only Shia community, but Islamic community and uh, entire world. Because I believe that time should come when what is happening here should be shared with others yes, uh, yes. because it's a it's a fascinating journey of faith yes. uh, and also experience of being a part of humanity which unlike our daily life is kind <laughs> Uh, let me introduce some. There's a Georgian delegation here. Really? Yes. Yeah. These are all. These are all Georgians. Georgian. <laughs> 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 Even though I'm a stranger in this country, I don't feel homesick. As I can see many Georgian compatriots who have also come here to be a part of this great event. You are, you are very tired. <laughs> <laughs> Little bit tired. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry. No, no worries. No, no, I'm no, no. It's 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 a joy to be with you today and friends. Yeah. Um, and spent he said uh, that he shares a moment of very special encounter. Um, I'm, I'm very happy uh, this uh, party. Thank you. Nous nous a regroupé l'imam El Hussein en fait pour ce qu'il a fait il y a presque 14 ans. Voilà. Il a sacrifié sa vie, sa famille, ses enfants, ses amis pour 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 sauver justement le l'islam pur de de son grand père. C'est lui en fait qui nous a regroupé. 
Iraqi people open the doors of their homes to welcome our buying guests, regardless of their nationality, religion, or culture. Here, everyone is welcome, poor and rich, educated or less educated, men or women or children. This tradition is deeply rooted among the followers of Imam Hussein. In order to express what we are experiencing here, is to speak about the family. Family gathering. Tonight, my friends and I are going to visit the grave of a great man named Imam Ali. Pilgrims come here from all over the world to pay respect to the two martyrs. They start the pilgrimage at the grave of the father and go from there to the grave of the son, from Imam Ali to Imam Hussein. I'm entering this shrine here as a humble pilgrim, along with thousands of other pilgrims, to pay my respect to the great man. This is a place where you particularly feel the need for Christians and Muslims to come together. There was time, some decades ago, when it was a luxury for Muslims and Christians to be together. But time has come when it is not luxury anymore, it is necessity, so that we work together for peace, reconciliation and a better world. This is not alternative. This is a necessity for the, for the benefit of the people of this planet and for the benefit of the generations to come. It seems to me that Shias and Christians are not only sharing common heritage as far as Abrahamic tradition is concerned. 
but also have a lot of things in common when it comes to rituals, prayers, and spirituality. I was deeply moved when I was asked by a Muslim mother to pray for her little child. This makes to think that people of faith are deeply related to each other in their beliefs. My research trip to Mesopotamian civilization had a spiritual dimension. This is the way which led us to Hussein, the person who was killed by the river Euphrates. Every year, millions of people come to this land of Safa from around the world. Every year, more than 20 million people attend the pilgrimage to Karbala where Imam Hussein is buried. They walk more than 80 kilometers in the wilderness to commemorate Hussein's resistance to injustice. I found myself in the crowd of thousands of people walking towards Kaaba. The man whose six months old thirsty child was martyred in his hands. They afflicted more than hundreds of wounds to the body of the father as well. They crushed his bones and finally beheaded him. They have also enslaved all of his family. That day is the day of the Lord God of hosts, a day of vengeance to avenge himself on his foes. The sword shall devour and be set it, and drink its fill of their blood. For the Lord God of hosts holds the sacrifice in Sapon by the river of Euphrates. Salam. What? Without shoes. Ah, right. No shoes. Uh, why? Why? Uh, why she's, uh, she's not real shoes? Yes, she's not real shoes. Ahsan, I'm going to go to Karbala. She said uh, that's better I, uh, for, uh, the, for the walk uh, to Karbala. It's better? It's better. But other people have shoes? No, uh, everyone have a face. Uh, you think that's better? Good, good. Good to you. Good to you. What is your name? She's me. Ruqayya. Ruqayya. Good to see you, Ruqayya. Where do you come from? From Lebanon. Lebanon, Lebanon. Ah, Ahlan wa Sahlan. Hello. Okay. Oh, yeah. Let's go down. Okay. 
Amazon. Well, we have just started the journey to Karbala. This is exciting to be among this large crowd of people. They're starting walking early morning. Among these people, you can see young and old, people of different races, and you can also see the majority of people participating in this uh, the walk are women. And I have been told this is only 20% that are, that are 20, 30% that are men, which means that it is appealing to a large crowd of people from all, all sorts of places, from different countries of the world, and therefore this, this should be seen as a healing experience for thousands of people, those who are seeking for physical healing, spiritual healing, and also elevation of injustice they have experienced in their lives. Karbala by the name of Gate of Tuvayric, ah, because of in the side right. of the Tuvayric. After uh, the martyrdom of Imam Muslim, every year, we, the biggest march and ah, the biggest let me come from the gate. From Tuvayric. Ah. It's in uh, Ashura, in the day of Ashura, about four hours. Four hours the people come, go, come to, from Haram, uh, from shrine of Imam Muslim. بين الهرمين ان جو اوت فروم هرم امام عباس فقط صدام يقول ممنوع مشي الامام الحسين مشي على ممنوع عدمت او سجلت اعدام سجن اذا اذا ما ما اجى هو ياخذون عائلته سجنون ممنوع يمشي الامام الحسين hosting 20 million pilgrims within a period of a few days is just like a miracle. The hosting entails the distribution of 400 million food portions during the largest annual pilgrimage in the world. Different Iraqi tribes and even other nationalities are responsible for hosting this magnificent event along this road. I wanted to be a part of this event and I became a host on behalf of Imam Hussein to the pilgrims upon my own request. Four words, Babylon, Euphrates, thirst, beheaded, are those ones that makes together Ashura. The event that was spoken of in some sacred books, the slaughter that was mentioned in the Quran. Tomorrow, I am going to enter a land called Karbal.
The tradition of people who love Hussein is to love others without condition and without boundaries. As the Shia people say, the gate of heaven is here, Karbala. 